What's up guys and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and we are here once again today playing Project Zomboid. So where we had left off, I had done a little bit of off-camera work. It's been about two or three days and you'll take a look. I've got ourselves a nice weapon rack right here. In this corner, I've got all of our tools and our random stuff we're going to be using. And over here in the fridge, we are well stocked. Look at that. The fridge of my post-apocalyptic character is better stocked than my own fridge. That is sad and depressing, my friends. Sad and depressing. So now we have a couple options on the table in front of us. We can sit around and feel miserable and sorry for ourselves. Just hang out in the house and just wait for time to end. That's one opportunity. That's that's door number one, but door number two, my friends, door number two, that is the intriguing one. So door number two says that we get back out there, we get back on the horse, and we get out and see if we can find any goodies. Now, those are gonna be to the northwest, and honestly, infiltrating the city is not gonna be easy. It is by no means asking the human torch to light a fart. Instead, it is very, very difficult, to be honest. So. We're going to be putting our lives on the line in this situation, and before it starts to rain down, you'll see I've made a midden pile out here. Society has fallen so far that I've gone back to medieval trash disposal. It's just a midden pile. Everything that I don't want, it goes in that pile over there. I mean, that's sort of how my trash in my house works right now. I've got a nice little plethora of plates that have been sitting around on my desk now for a few weeks, but in any case, we've somewhat reverted back to the trash systems of medieval lore. So this is our new fallback zone and what we need to do is we need to board it up and make it safe. Well, to do that we've got to find boards. Those aren't exactly anywhere nearby. The other thing we're going to possibly need is both an axe and a saw. If we can't get our hands on an axe and a saw, we can't chop down trees and we can't turn them into lumber. Without lumber, we can't board up the doors and the windows and we can't make ourselves safe for a final stand. Now, I overestimated how many bullets we had. I thought we had like 100 bullets by this point because frankly, we've been picking up bullets everywhere. That's been half of our journey is just finding random bullets all over the place, but that was not the case and so we only have 40 bullets, so I'm not actually carrying a pistol with me right now. We did have an intrusion into the old house. There were thousands of zombies everywhere. The whole situation was nasty. It was quite depressing. So I'm going to drink up here and refill the water bottle before we go out on any further missions. The milk is still looking decent in this place, which is surprising. I've moved all the bowls, all of the random stuff that we were stockpiling. It's all here. So now we can actually hit all of these houses and hit the random stuff that we left behind, which is really actually important. There aren't a lot of zombies around right now. I was able to kite most of them out of the neighborhood, which was no easy task. It took a little bit of doing, but don't be alarmed. It's not like I did anything ridiculously difficult off camera. In fact, it was mostly me just running in circles going, ee! being terrified of zombies. So that one's been searched. I'm going to leave the door open on everything I've searched so far, although that's already been my rule. I know I've noticed a few houses that I've forgotten to do just that with. Now here there's a bunch of magazines and things of that nature. I think we're probably going to want to take those because boredom is going to be a problem once we get further down the road. I don't see anything in the closet here, but we do have a shelf which is empty. Let's check this bookshelf. I think that was the one I just looted. Never mind. Let's check this cabinet right here. We've got a belt and a sheet. I don't know if the belt is going to be useful. Worst case scenario is we can run back out and get some of this little knickknackeries that are laying around. But most importantly, I want to grab bowls. I want to grab all kinds of things that are now more useful than they were before. I want to grab canned food. I want to grab bowls. I want to grab water bottles, anything I can find, empty mugs, because we're going to fill all of these up with water, and we're just going to fill up as many drawers of our house with as many of them as possible. And so let's grab the peanut butter too. And did we leave anything here? So there we go. The bananas, still good, surprisingly. You shouldn't put your bread in the fridge. That is actually bad for it. A lot of people put their bread in the fridge. In fact, I had a roommate that did it, and no matter how much I tried to convince her that it is terrible, I even gave her scientific reasons, which I can't remember at this point. I actually explained the process to her chemically, because at that point, I was feeling kind of high and mighty, and I was taking a bunch of chemistry classes, and I was like, rah, 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 rah. I know all kinds of important stuff. Listen to me rant at you about your bread in the fridge. And she didn't like that very much. And so after that, I think that more or less became the reason why she kept the bread in the fridge is because she knew it made me twitch. I have kind of a Sheldon Cooper twitch about certain things like that. But coming back to the house, let's drop off what we've gotten from the street here. Everything that we've achieved street level. So let's go ahead and put these in here. And I know I can click these on the sides and I should be doing that. It'll actually drop them all into here. Hey, you stay open. You stay open, sir. We're putting our ramen in there. We don't really need to. We'll put our peanut butter in there as well. And let's dump the rest of these magazines and things on our weapon rack real fast. This is going to be a half organizational, half loot the neighborhood episode because now we actually have the space to put all of this random stuff 
in our locality, we actually have a safe house that is not being invaded every three seconds by enemies, which is very cool. And for the first time, I'm actually starting to feel a little bit... Not safe, but I am feeling a little bit better about our situation. Beforehand, I was feeling like we weren't getting a lot of the preliminary things done, namely the collection of water-holding items. And now I feel like we're moving towards that goal a little bit quicker, and I'm happier about it. Let's throw... Oh, the bread. Yeah, we got to put the bread in here. We'll throw all of that in there, the canned beans as well. I want all of my food in this location. And so let's go hit the rest of these houses, and as soon as this neighborhood is completely and totally looted out, we can start thinking about what our further plans are. This is actually a pretty exciting day for us, because for the first time, we're actually able to handle things. I tried to loot the mailboxes earlier, by the way. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Absolutely worthless mailboxes. Ooh, and we've got a pack of zombies here. Now, one thing that I'm a little nervous about in looting all of this is the fact that we could potentially set off a burglar alarm. All these zombies are nicely collected over here in the corner right now. I don't want them to decide at some point that they're going to go, no, and point at my corner of the neighborhood and come find me. That is the situation that I would prefer to avoid as of now. I open the door there. Let's wait and see if an alarm goes off. I'm always nervous about this kind of stuff. Got a zombie in the house. It's not as bad as, say, a scorpion in the house or anything of that nature, but... Let's bludgeon. And down he goes. He, she, it, we, they, whatever we want to call it. Let's find ourselves some other things that we want. And I do hear someone tap, tap, tapping, so at any moment... We could end up with a unexpected visitor. We have been seen, but I don't really care, because we're not going to be coming back to this location anyways after we loot it. An egg and some ice cream. I'm going to eat the ice cream outright. I'm not going to eat the egg raw, because salmonella is not a joke. There is nothing fun about salmonella, you guys. It's like lupus. It sounds like it might be fun, but no, it is not. It also has nothing to do with vanilla, even though it has an illa sound in it. So just bear that in mind as you go through life. Those are splatter tips. Splatter tips for a happy life. And I don't think it's actually... We'll take the matches. I don't think we're going to need the bleach or anything of that nature. I don't see bleach being intensely useful. We'll check all these trash cans for anything that we might want. We've got a sock and a pen. We'll grab the pen because we can combine the pen with a notepad to make a journal, which lowers our boredom. Or we can make doodles if we have pencils, which are pretty cool. And who doesn't like the word doodle at the bare minimum? What is this right here? It looks like there's a door right there, but it doesn't seem to want to open. I think it's bugged. That right there is not willing to oblige. Let me go open the front door, even though it's risky. I know there were some zombies back here, but I'm going to open the front door real fast. Just to make it apparent that it's been looted. There we go. And let's jump that little banister, I guess is what you would call it. That's a fancy word for big metal, or I'm sorry, it's a fancy word for big wood thing that keeps you from falling off the stairs. Which I think is actually kind of comical. I think we should let people fall off the stairs. There'd be a lot more humorous YouTube videos. No more banisters, that's what I vote. Like, at my house when I was growing up for a while as a kid, we had no railing along the side of the upstairs floor. Like, there was an upstairs floor, and it had a banister that overlooked the the bottom floor, and you could actually fall off of it if you weren't paying attention. And so, oh, it looks like there's some zombies over there. One of the side effects of this whole transportation system is I have learned the neighborhood. I do actually know my way around the region somewhat. Not incredibly, but... I'm, I'm competent at this point. We'll kill that zombie off. I hear the telltale moan of our shambling amigos. Our shambigos. I guess. God. Just completely and totally out of anything creative to say, to be honest. And so then I just let the verbal diarrhea take over. Oh, no. Let's go ahead and close that door because it hasn't been searched. And then we're going to fall back to right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to hug the wall right here. And in hugging the wall, it's actually going to make us safe because these zombies are going to walk right by us and they're not going to see us. And so let's hang it tight for a minute. That one might see me though. That one's got a weird trajectory. It'll depend how good the zombie's peripheral vision is. Which from what I understand, zombies aren't so good with the whole peripheral vision thing, but that one saw us. Strangely enough. Yep. We have aggro. And so, bludgeons away. Shillelagh like the wind. Dude, if we had a shillelagh, we'd be in such a better situation right now. My dad has a shillelagh at home. It's pretty sweet. He cut it off a tree, and it's like like the la it's got the laminate knob and everything on it. It's pretty... It's, if you hit something with it, it would be, it would be endgame. It would be no longer a viable 
thing. Like, whatever you hit would no longer be viable at whatever its initial function was. I'll put it like that. I hear the sounds of breakage and of nervousness and sadness. So we got some other stuff here. Let's grab all of this that we can. I'm going to face the other way while we do it. Oh, never mind. It's going to be persnickety about the whole thing and not let me. Newspaper. Item literature. Oh, we're slowed. Yeah, we definitely need to take care of that then. If we get ourselves into a runner with a bunch of zombies like we potentially just did, that could actually backfire on me quite roundly. So let's throw everything into our man purse here. Oh, never mind. We're female. Huzzah! For the first time. For the first time, it's not a man purse. It's actually a purse. So nobody can make fun of me like in fifth grade at my birthday party. Let's throw that in there. Extra pen in there. I don't think it's that weighty. But, you know, we'll take our chances. Throw that little batch of matches in there. See if there's anywhere we can fill up our water bottle real fast. There we go. And so we will also grab ourselves a nice little slurpy drink. What the hell was that noise? That sounded like a door opening. Looks like we've already killed something up and in. Oh yeah, I remember that zombie. He was hiding in the closet. It was one of those Tom Cruise zombies. Those R. Kelly zombies. Let's see here. I don't think there's anything else that we can loot. And that was a South Park reference. I don't know if you guys... I don't know if I've ever mentioned that, that I'm a huge South Park fan. Like, I own, like, every season. I used to have all the episodes memorized. Like, I would test people. I'd be like, tell me the storyline of an episode. And I used to be able to rattle off, like, season three, blah, 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 blah. And I was, I was kind of an ubermensch nerd of South Park for a little bit. It was one of those things that... Well, I don't know if that's is a mensch the right word. I don't think that is. I don't think my Yiddish is so good as it should be. Well, I don't know if there's any reason for me to know Yiddish. I I don't know. Is there? Is there a tangible market for knowing Yiddish? I don't know. Let's go back to our house and we'll dump off all this random stuff we have. I've noticed that we're feeling a little bit burdened. I'm going to be careful about this situation though because we did just draw a lot of attention to our hood. And unfortunately, that's going to put us in the unenviable position of having to dodge zombies all the way home. We are at the end of this street. I've named it Meadowview Manor. That's where we live now. Meadowview Manor. The lovely bastion of safety, or semi-safety, from the zombie hordes. Hopefully nothing's here. We can build barricades later on. Unfortunately, I have neither the materials nor the motivation to do so as of yet. Let's take the rest of this, and we'll throw them all into one of these bureaus. If I wanted to sound nifty about it. It's a bureau. Yeah, it's a bureau. And so I think that's all of our water holding objects. Let's go and see what can go into our tool chest here. We'll throw the pen in there. It's kind of a tool. Maybe I should throw my drugs in there too. I can't decide. In any case, let's throw the magazines and whatnot, all the entertainment items here into this location. It looks like it's almost nighttime anyway, so we may have to take a break. Grab ourselves a little nappy napperoonie. I love naps. The only problem that I've ever found with naps is that, like, sometimes you get that weird shaky feeling, or at least I do. I don't know if other people get this feeling. I might just be weird. But when I take naps sometimes, and they're only, like, three hours long, I wake up and I have, like, this weird shaky feeling. Like, I just feel off. I just don't feel so good after I do it. And so, actually, I've been avoiding naps as of lately, but I might just be a weirdo, so don't take my word for it. I could just be some kind of strange creeper that gets shaky after naps. Who knows? Let's eat one of these bags of chips because we are hungry over here in the corner. And now that we have that circle squared, I always hit that wall right there. I hate that wall. If I had a sledgehammer, I would remove it. Let's see if we can find another location to loot and scoot out of very shortly. Because it's almost nighttime, but I think we've still got enough time to burn. Our character's not sleepy or anything of that nature. I'm going to move very slowly as we go further into the neighborhood. And we're just going to kind of work our way to the northwest, to be honest. As we get further and further to the northwest, it's going to get more and more dangerous on us. But the potential rewards are going to grow and grow, so... Those are, it's the risk versus reward aspect of the game, believe you me. There are things to be found here. We looted this place already. What about that over there? That's another house. There's a bunch of zombies out front, but if I can get inside, nope. Oh, zombie in the bushes. God. Oh, horde in the bushes. Oh, no. Okay, so we're going to get want to give this a really wide berth. I actually, we almost died right there. That's actually a really kind of funny situation. It's funny because I didn't die right there, but we should have. That was 
a colossal screw up on my part. I'm not going to wander around at night anymore. I'm actually going to cut behind some of these buildings, see if we can lose their line of sight. And we're just going to go back to our house. We just drew out a huge grip of zombies into the middle of the street, and that's going to be a problem in the future that we'll have to deal with. So, we're getting a little bit drowsy right now. Let's take a look at our skill sheet, because we haven't looked at that in a while. It's still saying our foot is bandaged. I really actually wish that that would go away, because it makes me feel very nervous about the fact that we may get infected pretty shortly. Skills? We have... Well, sprinting's almost there. I mean, we could level up sprinting pretty shortly. I don't know if that's a good thing to do. I, I have no idea whether that makes me faster, which would be super awesome, or it just lets me run longer, which is not so awesome. In our info menu, we've killed 64 zombies, and we are on day 11. We are doing pretty fantastically, you guys. We're not, we're not being a slouch at this survival bid so far. I'm going to go upstairs, and let's go ahead. Can we, yeah, let's fill that out of the water bottle. Let's kind of look around for anything else useful in the house that I may have left behind. So we've got some bath towels, some combs, things of that nature. We haven't actually closed up all the windows yet, which is probably a good idea. I should probably do that at some point. We've got lighters, skirts, vests, and so forth. It will please you to know that on my first male character, I did try and make him wear a skirt. But this is coming from a guy who played Dead Rising all the way through with the Borat outfit, so... Just be glad that I didn't play Borat on... Or I'm sorry, that I didn't play Dead Rising 2 on this channel, because you guys would be seeing a whole lot of mancakes. That is just the most humorous thing on Earth to me, and I don't know why. It's juvenile. It really is. It's juvenile. But every single time I do it, every single time... Let's find ourselves some windows here, and we've got two sheets. So, with our sheets in hand, there we go. We will, wait, did I pick them up? Hold on, what's going on here? Oh, they're in a bag. Let's go ahead and put them in my main inventory. All right, they're in the main inventory now. We can add a sheet to that window. And now that that's up, we can close it, and that is no longer a problem. We can go to the pooper without having to get ourselves into trouble. And that would be the worst way to ever get jumped by zombies. That would be a horrible, horrible thing to have happen. But, you know, sometimes you get caught up playing Fruit Ninja on the toilet, and you just don't know what happened. Next thing you know, it's midnight, and by that's that's a weird thing to talk about, but I'm not trying to be vulgar here, believe me. I'm, I'm really not, but all of my best scores in Fruit Ninja are all from my toilet time. The oddest thing, the strangest thing, I don't know what it is about toilet time that puts me in the zone for Fruit Ninja, but it does the trick, I tell you what. So if your Fruit Ninja scores are less than, they are less than satisfactory, if they are lackluster, give it a go on the old turlet and see what happens. I promise you, you will probably see like at least a 50 increase for whatever, uh, maybe it's just, maybe I'm just odd and my brain enters Zen mode whenever I enter that room, but... I get all relaxed, I get all settled in, and then all of a sudden I'm killing like 900 fruits in one play. It's just like, God, you better be kidding me. That game is absurdly... I fought the hype on that game for a long, long time. I resisted. I tried. I tried to be a hipster about it. I put on the biggest, most geeky glasses I could. I walked around with a typewriter and a phone that was actually like a real phone as a cell phone. I tried really hard not to play Fruit Ninja, but then I fell down to the hype, and I played it, and now I love it. So it is what it is. We've got a rather large building right here that I think it may... Oh my. No. Well, we've got some looting to do, my dear, dear friends. Let's take a look around and see what we can find here. We potentially just hit a gold mine. So let's grab as many of the objects here as we can. The paints are kind of heavy. I don't know if I should bring those or not. Well... I mean, I don't want to spend all my time running back and forth between here and another location. Got some nails. Oh, my. The fact that that door was unlocked heavily, heavily surprises me. Now, we've got buckets. And what buckets are going to be useful for is the fact that we can fill them with water, which is a temptation that I am absolutely going to give into. We've got a tent pig. Don't really know what that's for. Cyan paint, a paintbrush. We've already got a paintbrush. We'll take the bucket and all the nails. Hopefully there's not like thousands of zombies waiting in here. I really do feel like a kid at Christmas at the moment. The bucket, I think anyways, plaster powder. That's probably going to let us build an axe. There it is. There it is. So we have just moved into the next period of our game, which is we can actually lay down some boundaries and start putting in some gates. We can start making doors. We can start chopping down wood, getting logs. And so we're in a very, very sweet spot right now, my friends. We are in a sweet, sweet spot. I don't even know what to say about it, but... We're doing pretty well. I'm going to memorize this location, actually. I'm not going to try and truck everything back with me from here. I'm just going to memorize where we're at. There's another plank right there. Watering can, some nails. Pretty much everything we could ever want is in this building. I feel like 
we just totally won the lottery. And I had no idea that this was there, so this actually has all of the mysticism of a Christmas morning to me. I don't know if, if there was a chance that this thing was locked when you first came here. That would totally and completely blow if you couldn't get access to it. I could see that being very, very depressing. Let's grab all of those. I don't see any guns or anything. There's a hammer. We need that too, so we'll grab the hammer. And we should be over-encumbered officially right now. So let's take all of the stuff that's no longer fitting in our inventory, and we're going to throw it into a tote bag here. There we go. And so we're actually pretty well set up here. I'm going to sweep this building real fast to make sure there's no zombies up and around here. This would have been a nice place to start our base off as well, and I would hate to have to move things. But we have a water fountain. Do we have a fridge? Let's take a look and see if they have a fridge in here. They have a microwave. They have some chips. Always good. Dieting is kind of off the table at this point in human history, I suppose. Oh, yeah, dude. We are we are just stocked, guys. We are stocked. I don't even... I can't even appropriately vocalize how happy I am right now. So let's bear this in mind. Let's make sure... I'm going to make sure I can find my way back and forth between here and our house because I see many merry runs, many merry meandering marathons between here and there. There's the alliterative version. The pretentious alliterative version of what I was trying to say. And there's no zombies either. That just makes this so much more simple. Now the hammer is going to allow us to do some carpentry. The only thing we don't have is a saw. We could really use a saw. If we could get our hands on a saw, we would just be set. I would deforest all of this and get it going. We build ourselves a base, get some farming going. Oh, we don't have a hoe either. And don't read wrong into that sentence. We don't have a hoe. We need a gardening hoe, I mean. And so let's make ourselves a little tool chest here. Where's a good spot for the tool chest to be? I don't see any... Well, I guess we'll put it in this corner slot. So let's go over here. There's a bunch of random garbage in here that I'm going to have to sort out, unfortunately. I, it appears as though I missed a spot. And so let's take all of our stuff, and we're going to... Actually, the bucket's going to go somewhere else. The bucket's going to go down beneath the sink. And so let's throw our nails in there. I know that I put nails in the gun cabinet, but now I'm going to do a little bit more organization in between episodes. We've got planks, and there was a bunch of planks in that building too. Like, oh, I'm so excited right now. We pretty much just jumped from the early stage of the game to end game instantaneously, and it's only day 12. The power potentially will not go out for a lot longer, so there's nothing to worry about right now between just running gear is pretty much how we're going to spend our time. Got some more shotgun shells and a hammer here. Let's go ahead and move those over. Shotgun shells are going to go in this cabinet over here. So let's get that going. Right now we'll probably get sick and die of a flu right after I get all excited. And so now, how many shotgun shells? 36 shotgun shells. We could actually wage war. 48 shotgun shells. We could wage war if we could only find a shotgun. I get the distinct feeling that in that building somewhere we're going to find a shotgun. Now, I'm actually going to store the baseball bats and I'm just going to carry the axe with me for now. I don't really know what the possibility is of losing durability off an axe. Let me see if I can get this bat up and off the floor. There we go. And so let's grab that. I'm going to put both the bats in our weapon cabinet right now. Along with all of our reading material. And so any reading material we have on hand, anything? Nothing at the moment. So let's take baseball bats, put that in there. I'm going to use the axe from now on. The axe is going to be my go-to weapon from here on out. I think the durability is going to last us a little better. If it's got a plasticized handle or one of those fiberglass handles, this thing would potentially never break. This thing is an endless zombie-killing boon to us. And so we will equip it as our primary weapon. It's a little heavy, which is something we're going to have to live with. And it's got its own graphic, which I'm thankful for. Now we put nails in there. I guess that was going to be our cabinet. Let's see if we can fill up this bucket. I'm interested to see if this bucket will fill with water. Obviously, that's what you use a bucket for. So hopefully, yeah, we can fill it up with water. All right. So I wonder how long of a ration that bucket's going to be for us. In any case, there is no way that it's four pounds of water. So that's a pretty good amount of water. I think it should hold us over for a little bit. I'll fill all these in between episodes so that you guys don't have to suffer through it. But it's only 1140, so let's see what we can drag back from that location once again. Actually, I should probably dump the peanut butter in here. Actually, we're hungry. Let's just eat the peanut butter. The peanut butter I don't think is perishable, but I don't want to risk it. If it goes bad, I'll cry because I love peanut butter. I don't want to live in a world where there's no peanut butter. It'd be bad enough if zombies took over and just destroyed everything, but if there's no peanut butter, game over, man. Game over. So, 
let's avoid zombies as best as possible. Just kind of walk by that fence. I don't know how good their sense of hearing is, but I prefer not to tickle their hairy little ears with the pitter-patter of my wonderfully lovely feet. And let's hit this location one more time for anything that's going to be useful. I don't know, do you guys want me to loot this thing on camera? This may be the last episode that I record for a potentially little while until I get a feel for the series. But until then, I mean, throw it down in the comments. If I end up pre-recording, then there's not going to be a whole lot that I can do about it. But in any situation, I figure I'd throw a question out there just in case. Got a lot of paint colors here. I don't see any reason to bring the paint with me unless I absolutely need to handle that. There's some plaster. We're not going to use that for a little while, I don't think. I'm going to take a plank. Possibly take a battery, too. That should... Is it going to over-encumber me? No, we're good. Okay, so let's switch that back to there so that it auto-loads all this cool stuff that we're packing in here. Another watering can. We're going to take that. And a bunch of nails, looks like. Good, 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 good. And so we'll take all the nails. And I almost feel like I'm cheating. I feel as though I have typed in cheat codes and just completely and totally fell into a world of wonderment and magical planky woody goodness. And also tent pegs, but I don't know what those are useful for. Hopefully for stabbing zombies in the face with some kind of projectile launcher. Like a tent peg ballista. Yeah. That's what the game needs. If the developers ever see this, tent peg ballista, my friends. Tent peg ballista. You can set it up. You can fire it at zombies. Hit them in the face. Oh, no. And I've got that issue that I've had before where this thing is stuck to my cursor. And I have no clue how to get rid of it. So for the time being, we're going to have to break off our loot and scoot here as I don't have any idea how to get this thing off of my cursor. Get off of me! Get off of me! I hate you. Go away. Well, something I'm gonna have to live with, unfortunately. And is it gone? It is! It's gone! Hooray! I don't know why it gets stuck to my cursor sometimes. That's a problem I come across every now and again, where my cursor gets stuck with the window on it and it just won't let me release it anywhere. We're going to grab as many nails as possible because nails are going to be incredibly useful. There's not exactly a whole lot of galvanizing facilities left in this situation. So we got to make do with whatever nails we can find. I'm going to leave all the gardening supplies and things here as is necessary. Let's loot this box. Nothing there. I'm probably missing loads of stuff right here just because of the inefficiencies of the looting system unfortunately. It's going to be very difficult to target all of this stuff. I don't know what the battery is going to be good for. I think it probably recharges, like, the flashlight or something. Maybe. In any case, I want it. Ooh, there's a big old pile of nails. Let's take all of those. So all your nails are now my nails. And we will trade them. We will trade them for goodies. Goodies of a variable nature. And so I think we're pretty much probably loaded up at this point. Yeah, let's go ahead and head back to camp here close the door. If there were scavengers, I would see this place getting hit so rapidly. Oh no. Okay, so that big old diatribe that I just fed you about how there was no zombies in between one location and another, it just spawned a bunch on me. How fun is that? So now we're gonna have to go around and through the picnic tables. Let's test this axe out. I want to test this axe out. Yeah, that's what I like to see. That is what I like to see right there. That is how we do it. That is how we do it. And it didn't even touch the durability. Oh, there's another group right there. So the game has apparently decided to throw a monkey wrench into my life and just spawn zombies everywhere. If I find a pack spawned near my house, I'm going to be intensely, intensely upset. Luckily, I unlocked the back door for myself. We'll sprint on in, and we're approaching the 30-minute marker. So this is a good place to break off the episode. We found ourselves some really cool stuff in this episode. As a recap, we did a great job here. We really, really did. So... Things are looking good for us for the first time in a little while. I'm feeling a little bit safe, but those newly spawned hordes are going to give us problems as we go along, so we'll bear that in mind as we try out Project Zomboid in our next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow.